So the last section we're going to look at talks about the fundamental accounting principle, factorials, permutations, and combinations. These are our accounting rules. The fundamental accounting principle essentially says this. Formally, it's n times p times q times, and keep on going. All it basically says is, if you're looking at three or four or five different items someone can select from, how many items can they select for the first option? How many for the second? How many for the third? And keep on going for as many objects as there are, and just simply multiply those guys together. We'll look at an example of that in one second. Factorial that you saw before, most likely in Algebra 2. If you see something written as 5 factorial, you know that simply just means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It's this number multiplied by every number previous to it. Permutations, this is key to remember if you want to memorize these things, order matters. And if you're talking about combinations, order does not matter. Now, as we'll talk in class, I'm not a big memorization guy. I don't want to memorize these things. I want to use the one that makes the most sense. If you're talking formulas for a permutation, it falls into this form. n factorial over n minus r factorial. If you're talking about combinations, it's n factorial over n minus r factorial, which is the same thing, but then we throw another r factorial on bottom. So essentially, this is just the number of permutations divided by r factorial because this piece can be replaced with a permutation. So let's look at these in action. First of all, the accounting principle. When we talk about the fundamental accounting principle, so in this case, Dan is making a picture for his daddy. He has five different colors of construction paper. He's got three stickers, and he's got six different crayons. Let's say he's allowed to pick one piece of construction paper, one sticker, and he's only able to use one crayon. Well, all we would simply do is multiply five times three times six he can make 90 different pictures. That's all the fundamental accounting principle is. And we can look at this through a various different ways. What if he's going to pick a piece of construction paper? Just pick him one. He's only going to put one sticker on there. But now he's going to pick two colors. Well, he's got six choices for his first selection. Well, let's say he picks blue. He's only got five more choices for his second selection. So this is the number of construction papers. This is the number of stickers. This is his choice for the first color with the crayons. This is his choice for the second. Now he has 450 different ones he can make. What if he's picking a piece of construction paper? And what if he's going to pick a sticker? But he might not pick a sticker. So there's three stickers he could pick. Or he could say, no, nah, I'm good. No, thank you. Now he has four choices the three stickers, and the one nothing. If he's only able to pick one crayon, well now he has 120 different pictures he can make. So it's the same idea here, it's just different variations. We did five factorial. So we know exactly what that looks like. So let's look at this permutation. This is going to be 10 factorial, which we know is 10 times 9, all the way down, 4, 3, and so on and so forth. All that over, well, the bottom of the factorial says 10 minus 4. So the bottom of my factorial is going to be 6 factorial. So it's going to be 6 times 5 times 4, and so on and so forth. What ends up happening, this chunk and this chunk end up being exactly the same thing. So these are going to cancel each other out, leaving with just simply 10 times 9 times 8 times 7, which has a value of 5,040, and that's if order matters. 
combination, on the other hand, ends up being 10 factorial over 10 minus 4, which is going to give me 6. R factorial, which is just simply 4. We did this part. We know that that gives me 5,040. So all I have to do is take this number and divide by 4 factorial, which gives me an answer of 210. So how is this and this, what's that look like in an actual situation? So in a competition, there are 10 competitors. How many different outcomes are there if there are four people who win and the prizes are unique, the prizes are different? So whether you finish first, second, third, or fourth, it does actually matter. Well, that's where the 5,040 come in. What if the prizes are the same? Whether you finish first, second, third, and fourth, it doesn't make any difference. First place and fourth place get the exact same prize and so on and so forth. That's where this 210 come in. You can memorize these formulas. You can memorize when does order matter and when it doesn't. What we're going to look at tomorrow is the idea that what if I just common sense my way through this and use mathematical logic to figure out do I expect a larger number? or do I expect a smaller number? So let's talk about the difference between permutations and combinations here. Let's say we had three people finishing a race. Al, Bob, and Chris. Well, I think we agree that if it's a permutation, if we're talking about order mattering, someone getting gold, silver, or bronze, these are six completely different scenarios. But if these people are racing and the winners all get the exact same thing, they all get the exact same medal in the end, this is only really one situation. All six of these represent the same thing, where Al, Bob, and Chris all get the same prize. So they're all the exact same thing. Think about how that connects to permutations and combinations, and that's what we'll talk about in class.